What's up guys, my name is Shadowfall and welcome back to my Manco Mercenaries Handbook, Beginner's Guide to TF2. Now I will be talking to you with the secondaries next for the scout, so that way you guys will have an understanding of how these work and how to utilize them in combat. My name is Shadowfall and this is the second chapter of my Manco Mercenaries Handbook. First, let's run down your secondary stock weapon, which is the pistol. Now, this pistol has shitty accuracy due to random bullet spread. The good news is that there's no nerfs and no buffs, so all it is is basically a stock pistol. Now, I will show you a trick on how this pistol works, and it will help you with random bullet spread in this clip right here. When you shoot and then reload, don't actually reload yet. Keep on shooting before it get finishes its reload animation, so you'd actually get the chance to have fixed bullet spread with your pistol. Now you can shoot this weapon regardless of where you're at, just as long as you keep your crosshair on your target, so that way your pistol can actually deal the maximum or minimum amount of damage, just as long as you keep your crosshair on them. This kind of works with all weapons, so you don't have to be super explicit about it. This is basically it for the stock pistol, there's not really much to talk about it, but, but now let's move on to the next secondary weapon. My all-time favorite between the stock pistol and now this one. This is known as the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol. Now the stats on this weapon it says that it has a 50% faster firing speed, so it is still very powerful, especially if you can keep your crosshair on your target. Now the only downside it has is the less clip size, so that's kind of understandable right there, especially if it is faster when you're firing this. Now the uniqueness of this weapon is that you gain 3 health Per shot you deal, it's basically a leech weapon. Now for all those scout mains and future scout mains that are really hate fucking afterburn, this weapon is the right choice for you since every scout main that I know and everybody else knows that we all hate fucking afterburn and we die to it plenty of times. To me, the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol is one of the best secondaries aside from the stock pistol. Now watch this clip very carefully. Do you see this heavy right here? He's about to rev up his minigun and I'm about to go through a world of hell. Now watch my health bar. Did you see that? My health got halfway and then I regained it all back just as long as I keep my crosshair on him. That's why this thing is so damn good. That's why you can use any primary with this weapon, but in my case, you can actually use this with the Babyface's Blaster since technically, if you're dying of Afterburn, you can actually regain your health back, or if you lose your boost at the same time, you can actually regain it all back while gaining some health back as well. So that's why this thing actually is a perfect combo, or at least one of them, for the Babyface's Blaster. That's it for this secondary weapon, now let's move on to the next weapon. Now this weapon's a little interesting because this is one of the last pistols that I have seen for the scout. The winger is a really powerful tool and a good weapon at the same time and I'll tell you why. The winger has a minus 60% clip size, it's not that great comparing to the pretty boy's pocket pistol and the stock pistol. It has a 15% damage bonus which is understandable since it only has less ammo than all the other pistols. Now here's the interesting part right here. This thing has insane mobility and the unique ability to this weapon is 25% increased jump height while you have this weapon active. You can use this weapon anywhere in any map, so thank god for that. But there is also a good secret hiding spot in Badlands where you can actually get on top of a roof without actually having to use any other weapon. You can use the force of nature to get up there, but somebody would hear you shooting up there since technically they can actually hear you behind a wall. Yeah, I don't know how that works, it just does. <laughs> now remember when I said that the last episode when the soda popper was broken when you gained 4 extra jumps in a total of 6 and you can go anywhere around the map? Well, plus the winger, not only you can use the hyper jumps with the soda popper, you can use the hyper jumps with the winger and it'll give you extra height with those six jumps and you can basically go anywhere in the map but way farther with that extra height and you can go anywhere. And the funny thing is that this, <laughs> ah, damn it, I can't even say it. This weapon is also in a set, so it makes it easier. 
The moral of the story is that it's less shooty, more of a mobility weapon. So it's understandable why it has less ammo or else it would have been broken as hell and everybody would start using it. Now the question in the thumbnail is, will this finish my opponents? All three pistols, it is possible to finish your opponents. Just as long as you keep your crosshair on them, then you'll be fine. So technically the answer is yes, it will finish your opponents. The moral of the story for the winger is that it's less shooty and more of a mobility weapon. So so it's understandable. That's it for the pistols, let's move on to the next secondary weapon. Now this one's an interesting one, this is also one of the funny weapons. This one is called the Flying Guillotine. This thing has no random crits, but <laughs> what do you expect? This thing would be broken as all hell if this thing had random crits. Now here's the interesting part, this weapon will inflict bleed damage onto any player for 8 seconds. Now a little secret with this weapon, the farther you throw this weapon, the shorter your recharge time is. So if you manage to hit your target all the way across from another country, then you will manage to get your cleaver back a lot faster. <laughs> Now you're not gonna get kills a lot with this weapon because most of the times people are always getting overhealed by medics. So take down the medics and you can get right back into your match. But if you have taken damage, get back to a health pack and then go back to your match. Now if you want to deal massive damage, I recommend three scatter guns, which is the scatter gun, obviously, the force of nature, and funny enough, the baby faces blaster. The baby faces blaster paired with the flying guillotine, you can actually have another way to actually get your boost and it, it is really satisfying and it's also double trouble for them if they get in the way just remember to stay away from these sentries because they will also destroy your boost as well with the force of nature you can do mass amounts of damage and once they're weak enough you can throw the guillotine as well and damage them immediately and they'll instantly die the scatter gun though doesn't really need an introduction for it so just do mass amounts of damage or you can use the flying guillotine from the start they work both ways so go out there and piss off the enemy team and let's move on to another weapon Now we got another good secondary weapon on our hands, which is called the Mad Milk. The Mad Milk allows you to extinguish teammates, which <laughs> helps you a lot, especially if there's enemy pyros. And if you throw it to your designated target, it will allow you to heal 60% of damage done to enemy players and return to you as health. And the good news is that there's no downsides, so you can basically use this as a good secondary. The only weird thing about it is that its recharge time sucks, because you only be able to use it once every 20 seconds, and when you affect enemy players with it, it will be used for 10 seconds, and it'll go back to normal. Now funny enough, this thing is really powerful, especially if you use the Babyface's Blaster, since you gain health, if you lose your boost, you can use the Mad Milk against enemy players, then you can gain your health immediately right back while you're getting boost at the same time. That's why this thing is so powerful. Not only you can use this on yourself, you can use it on other teammates too, so you can actually help your teammates get health as well. That's why the Mad Milk is also be good as a support weapon as well. It allows your team to get some health and it will also allow you to get some health as well in the process. Now there is a game mode in TF2 which is called MVM, also known as Man vs. Machine, where you fight robots and other giant robots where they're trying to grab a bomb and place it into your home building or where your location is at. And there's an upgrade station where you can actually go to that upgrade station, select the Mad Milk, and there's an upgrade where it allows you to slow the bots down by half of their speed. You can also get health from them, and if you ever approach giant robots, they will also become very, very slow, and you can also gain their health as well. Now you can get to Man vs. Machine, and this is where you go. You go to the game, obviously, you go to the main menu, there's a selection where it says Man vs. Machine. You click that and it will show you two options where there's Man Up and Boot Camp. Well, you can't go to Man Up unless you have the Man vs. Machine tour ticket. And you can go to Boot Camp and it will allow you to play any MVM for free without any hassle. Now your game may look different than mine, that's because I also am using a HUD for my game and you can find that in the description below. That's it for this tool and let's move on to another secondary. Now this is one of the two drinks that is not really bad, so to say, 
but this one also can be played as an aggressive playstyle, which this one is called the Criticola. The Criticola gives you a guaranteed mini crits for 8 seconds, but all at the expense of giving you Mark for Death for 10 seconds. The weapon will give you guaranteed mini crits, but the issue is, is that you'll become a glass cannon. What I'm saying is that you deal mass amounts of damage, pure destruction everywhere, but at the expense of you dying a lot faster if you don't find safety what this weapon does and i'll show you i drink the critical i go after this medic and he is immediately dropped now i tried to shoot the soldier but i struggled a little bit so i tried to get out of there but then this sentry immediately obliterates me i had low health there but the issue is is that there was a sentry right there and i had marked for death and i immediately got obliterated straight after that's why you need to be careful when using this tool because if you don't watch out for your surroundings you will immediately get obliterated you become strong but at the expense of dying quicker now easy way to do this is if you hide behind a wall you won't get immediately obliterated no matter what happens if you do it in the open though guess what you have a target on your back and you're gonna easily die now the best idea to do this is if you use the criticola use the short stop because it'll basically act like a scatter gun from long to mid range so you don't actually have to deal with a lot of enemy fire now that's it for this weapon let's move on to the last secondary weapon This is the last secondary weapon in the scout arsenal, which is known as the Bonk Atomic Punch. The Bonk allows you to gain invincibility for a couple of seconds, and you won't be able to attack during that time period. If you've been taking damage while you're invincible, you'll be so as all hell like a snail on a wheelchair. While unlike the Criticola, which it gives you an aggressive route, this one plays the passive route, since you can easily flank into other positions and you can get to their base as fast as possible just as long as you're not noticeable to the enemy team now you can lose the slowness ability really easily just as long as you slide left and right a bunch of times and you should be right back to normal now that if you're invincible for a couple of seconds you can actually negate sentry guns ammo shooting directly at you since it will also help your team take it down a lot faster so that way you and your team can go back to whatever you're doing and speaking of flank capabilities this weapon plus the backscatter will easily give you the most perfect flank tactic in all of tf2 as scout now the mad milk the criticola and the bonk atomic punch will this finish my opponents well technically if you want to rely on your primary weapon to deal more damage if you want to finish off your enemies and eh, not really but you also be handicapped without a pistol but if you want to rely on your primary weapons to deal the damage and as long as you keep your crosshair on them then you should be completely fine if you can make it work then hell congrats for you guys now let's finish this Look at that, you guys learned all the secondary weapons, you guys learned all the primary weapons, congrats for you guys for actually getting this far, nice. And this is it for this secondary weapon, so thank you guys so much for watching, if you guys need any help or any questions you would want me to answer, let me know in the comment section below and I'll gladly help you guys out. And thanks to your guys' support and everything else, we are so close to 200 subs. So if we can make it to 200 before this February ends, then that would be the most kick-ass thing that will ever happen to me. So if you're enjoying the content so far, or you're brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing so that you'll never miss a video and an update on when the next video will come out. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And before I go, thanks to StockZip, I now have the Chuckle Nuts cosmetic, and it is the most sickest thing that I've ever seen for a Scout cosmetic. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!